Hey, and welcome to the highlights of episode number 213 with Juliet Allen. Now, some of my favorite parts of this episode were when she shares how to become an exceptional lover. This is for both men and women. I also loved it when she shares the keys to epic communication and how it will supercharge your relationships. I also loved it when we chat about the love bubble, what that is, and how you can have one with your partner, and how to keep your intimacy alive in long term relationships. So many people ask me about this, and the answers you have been looking for, we share in this episode. But there is so much more wisdom, knowledge, and inspiration that you get in the full episode. So, to listen to the full podcast and get all the info in the show notes, Head on over to melissaambrosini.com forward slash 213 right now. Juliet, I am so excited to have you on the show. Now, can you tell us about your story and how you got to where you are today doing the work that you now do? Like this isn't a conventional, quote unquote, conventional path or a conventional career. So how did you end up here? Tell us your story from where it all began. All right. So at a young age, I was very sexually explorative with my own body and self-pleasure felt like a really natural thing to do. I never felt much shame or guilt around it. I just would like enjoy it in my bedroom and think that it was normal and natural. And so I feel like my journey began quite young. And then once I hit teenage years, I was really curious about sex. However, I wasn't wanting to engage really in sex but I wanted to read books about it and then I'd spend hours in secondhand bookshops just like in the sex section reading about like tantra and the ancient Taoist sex techniques and so I was really curious from a young age and then I studied psychology and I became a yoga teacher and then I gave birth to my daughter And I felt like there was something missing from my career as a yoga teacher, but I didn't know exactly what it was. And I was just, I was chatting with a friend one day and she asked me, you know, if you could do anything, what would it be? And I was like, well, I'd, I would be making money and educating people about sex. And but I don't know how to do that. And then we found out that I could study sexology. And so I was enrolled within like two days into a master's of sexology. And I've never turned back. It was a a big turning point in my life. I feel really on purpose with what I'm doing. Beautiful. And so for people listening, what is a sexologist? Mm, Good question. A sexologist can be a lot of different things. So there's different sexologists in the world who specialize in different areas. But what I do is I educate and empower people to be living a life full of great sex, to feel sexually free. And I, so I run workshops. I work one-on-one with people on Skype. So as a coach, sex and relationship coach. I've heard so many people, both you know, people that I've worked with as clients and mentored, but then also family and friends that have said to me things along the lines of, oh, sex isn't important. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, it it doesn't matter that we don't have sex all the time. It's not a part of our relationship. You know, we're best friends. What would you say if someone came to you and said that? Like, what would you say? Well, I feel sex is a really important part of our life and sexual energy, we're born with sexual energy in our body. It's really normal and natural to feel that energy in our body. And so some people do have a lesser sex drive than others and it is less important and less of a priority in some relationships. And that is okay. I think a small percentage of people genuinely are happy to forgo sex, but I feel like if those people knew what's possible when with sex connection and intimacy, then if they got a taste of that, then they'd be like, oh, that actually is what I want for my relationship. Mm. And I love that you say how you do sex is how you do everything in life. So what do you mean by that? Mm. Well, an example would be how enthusiastic are you about connecting with 
with your partner in the morning or in the evening or through the day is a reflection of how enthusiastic are you around connecting with yourself and with life and with with life force and with other humans, our family, our friends. So I feel like how you do sex is how you do life. When we're really enthusiastic and we're like willing to commit to having a really deep, amazing sexual relationship with ourselves and our lover or our husband or whoever, whoever we're with, then it's a reflection of how enthusiastic we are about all areas of our life and about having a great life, basically, and creating what we want. For men and women both listening, how can we become exceptional lovers and have this life-changing sex? How, how do we get there? Firstly, it's not, I feel like there's no magic pill, and this is what I say to clients, that there's not a magic wand that I can wave or you can wave over them and be like, now you're an exceptional lover. I feel like it's a lifelong journey and it's a commitment to self to really explore the parts of ourselves firstly that get in the way of us feeling really comfortable in our sexuality and in our body and in ourselves. So the first step of becoming an exceptional lover would be to work through the stuff from childhood, any trauma that we have, any limiting beliefs, do that with a coach or a therapist or whoever you resonate with and get some support around that and clear all this baggage. So what happens is it can mute or numb our sexual energy in our body. So we wonder why we're not feeling sexually alive or sexually confident. And it's because we've got all these boulders in the way. So I recommend that people clear the emotions that we've stored and pushed down over the years. And then it frees us up to feel more sexual energy in our body, which that leads me into the second thing, which would be really being okay with touching ourselves and knowing what turns us on and knowing how to tap into our orgasmic energy by ourselves. because when we do that, then we're more of an exceptional lover with others. Number three is having a curious and open mind and being open to new experiences and we're not taught as children we're not taught as adults really how to communicate effectively in life in general. But when it comes to sex, we can find it quite difficult. So it's good to learn some communication skills and be okay with asking for what we want and discussing you know, our sex life with our partners. That's a big part of being an exceptional lover. Whenever there's a breakdown in a relationship, whenever there is a misunderstanding or someone gets angry or disappointed, someone, maybe both, but usually one person in the dynamic has not practiced CCC. They've not practiced crystal clear communication. Mm -hmm. And so we really do need to cultivate CCC and practice crystal clear communication with ourselves, with our partners, with our children, with our family, with our friends. I find that whenever there is friction, it's because either I or the other person hasn't practiced that. And it can feel sometimes quite vulnerable because you can feel like you're opening your heart and it can feel maybe even like a little bit scary at times. But What's the alternative? Oh, it's so I love CCC. I'm going to I'm going to adopt that one, crystal clear communication. I'll adopt it personally too because it is it's so important and I do want a present so that it it is a hard one to master. Even I find personally sometimes I want to I want to be crystal clear in my communication, especially with my partner. And sometimes I just can't find the words because I have a lot of emotion bubbling up or I just don't exactly know what I'm feeling. So it's not always easy either. I'll share my little tips with you because Mm. if I'm feeling something and if something's bubbling away and I can't quite articulate it yet, I don't go to him. Mm. I don't go to him until I've seen my therapist or maybe I need to just chat to a friend about it, or maybe I just need to sit with myself and journal and get clear. And then what I do is I say to my husband, I'd like to have a love bubble with you tonight. 
A love bubble is basically a very safe and sacred space. And what happens in the love bubble is you wrap yourselves in this literally like bubble. Mm -hmm. And this is where you practice CCC. And if I say, I would like to have a love bubble with you, he's like, yeah, sure. No worries. Let's, let's get into bed early and we'll do it. And we'll just kind of sit in bed and do it. Mm -hmm. And in that safe space, that's where I can express and he doesn't say a single thing until I have said, I'm finished or I'm done expressing. Mm -hmm. And then he will talk. And then he'll say, thank you for expressing. And then he'll give his feedback. And I cannot tell you, we've been doing this for a few years. It is life changing. Mm, I love that idea. I really love that. And it's so awesome to hear that you guys are practicing that. And such, such like great, great, this is going to help so many people listening if they can do that. And I like what you say around, basically you need to pick and choose when you're going to bring stuff to your partner. And I think the best thing to do is what you guys are doing, which is request, hey, this is what I need. I want to go into the love bubble. And so your partner can prep him or herself to be able to listen really effectively. It is about asking our partner, are you open to listening right now? What are your tips on how we can really keep that intimacy alive in a long-term relationship? Firstly, both people in relationship need to want to prioritize sex and intimacy. I find that with a lot of clients and couples that I see that often one person is just not that into it and they're not wanting to prioritize it and the other does and that's where conflict arises because one person sees it as so important and the other is like, I don't really care, like this isn't important to me. So getting together and having a conversation to agree this is something that we want to prioritize in this relationship from the beginning. So having that conversation. And then I recommend always prioritizing quality time with each other. So what can happen is we get really busy at the start. We're in the quote unquote honeymoon phase and we're like, we just can't get enough of each other. And then life rolls on. We get busy. We're all, all very busy these days. I find that we're busier than ever. And sex gets pushed onto the sidelines and we don't prioritize just simply quality time. So as a couple agreeing that even if we have children, which a lot of people listening would, that you need to make time without the kids too, where it's just you guys. You don't have to actually have sex, but where you can just chat and have fun and laugh and have intimacy together, whether that's just cuddling or kiss or, or whether it leads into making love, but prioritize quality time. Why is it so important that we create a sacred space for us to make love? It's so important that we create this beautiful space because it allows us to drop into connection and intimacy without all the clutter. And it's really important to declutter and create a beautiful space because I feel like our sex life is needs to be priority again and it's really important to have this clean energy in the space so that we can drop in quicker with each other. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's been huge for us, huge. And not mm. only for our sex life but just for our sleep. Like <laughs> the quality of our sleep has just deepened so much because when you walk in there, you send a signal to your brain that it's sleep time or mm-hmm. lovemaking time, you know, not a time to get in there and whip out your phone. It's a good point you make about the phone because this is becoming more and more of an issue in relationships. We're so attached to our phone and to social media and work and everything. It's like a little mini computer in our hand. And so many couples are going to bed with their phones and just lying there and scrolling together. And so the rule that I have is no phones in the bedroom and most of my clients adopt that rule and come back to me and they're like, oh my God, that was the best change that we made for our relationship. Oh, totally. And their sleep. Yeah, (laughs) definitely. I've been dealing with, you know, grief or some health stuff. And then I realized, you know, once I got some blood work done that my hormones were 
all out of balance. And then I was like, oh, that explains why I don't feel like making love. So Mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that in there because a lot of people have that excuse of, I'm just not an intimate or sexual person, but really like they are deep down, but their hormones are just out of whack. Oh, I completely agree. And it's so handy when you get your hormones tested to then work with someone, um, whether it's a physician or a naturopath or whoever, um, to balance the hormones out again. Last year, I was like, my estrogen was really high. And so I worked with an, a naturopath and an acupuncturist to balance the, bring the estrogen down. And it made such an impact to, to my life in general and to my libido and, it's so important to, to be on top of these things, it really is. Absolutely. Now, this is for the men listening. You talk about three ways to pleasure your woman every day. What are those three ways? And men, listen up. So the first thing would be presence. Presence is so important. Presence allows our feminine to feel safe. It allows our feminine to surrender, unfold, open. That is the essence of the the healthy feminine energy. And so as a man, if you can cultivate really deep presence with your woman, then your woman will be able to open and allow her, her pussy to open and her heart to open and that just leads to more amazing connection and sex. So presence is the number one tip. The next one would be letting go of the need to reach orgasm. So a lot of the time we, we've we been conditioned to feel like sex needs to have an ending or an end goal, which is orgasm. The second tip is just letting go of that goal and instead focusing on all the little things that you can do to explore your woman's body and to connect with her in a deeper way. Because when you take out the goal of orgasm, then you're both going to be able to feel into the subtle energies and the orgasmic energy in your body that you may miss if you're just racing for the finish line. So. Number three, the third tip is staying with your woman for as long as she needs after sex. So a lot of the time, because of the busyness of life, we enjoy sex and then it's like, all right, I need to go, I need to go to work, I need to get up and take the condom off or I'm going to have a shower or we need to clean up. A lot of women in those moments, the woman can feel abandoned in those moments and a lot of women have an abandonment wound as their core wound. I would say have a ha, communicate and have a conversation with your partner around what does she need after sex. So asking what do you need to feel safe to open and what do you need from me to feel safe after sex too. So the fourth tip would be really nurturing your woman's heart because a woman's heart space is the positive pole in her body. So for a woman to fully open her her pussy and open her legs and like really feel ready to take a man inside of her, we need to feel, ultimately, we need to feel that our heart is open. I wanted to ask you, what is the average amount of lovemaking? What have you seen to be really effective in cultivating a beautiful partnership? Like what's that number? I get asked this a lot and I really feel like there is no right or wrong answer to this. But I would say, let's say an average, if I'm going to put a number on it, if you're in a relationship, that, a long-term relationship, like twice, twice, three times a week would be a nice number to connect. Yeah. I think that's being conservative. You know, what works for some people doesn't work for others. And our sex life, I mean, it changes like you'd know through a marriage, through the ups and downs of life and through pregnancy for women and childbirth and breastfeeding. We as individuals and as a couple, I think what we sign up for when we enter into a relationship is being okay with the mystery 
that life is and the ups and downs of life and that they will impact our sex life and that that's okay. 